Okay, so I said I wasn't gonna buy any more books, and let me just take my bullet notes off from the last video. <laughs> so I said I wasn't gonna buy any more books, but who, who am I kidding? Do, do I not know myself at all? <laughs> of course I bought more books. I was on the book outlet, which is a website where you can get, get books really super cheap. And I was buying a gift card for a friend who lives out of state and I got completely sucked in by their new arrivals banner. <laughs> I thought, well, I'll just take a look, but I won't buy anything. No, no, <laughs> I, I bought books. <laughs> so the first one I'll show you is called the, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher this name because I have no idea how to pronounce it. The, uh, I probably should have looked it up. The, a Need or Aeneid by Virgil, and it's translated by Robert Fitzgerald. I hate it. I hate it when I do that. I really need to get better about looking up titles I don't know how to pronounce. So anyways, yes. Um, uh, I watch Steve Donahue. Uh, he is my favorite booktuber. I just absolutely love his videos. He knows a lot, and he's very interesting, and he puts out a lot of videos, and, um, and also he's just adorable. I just love him. I just love watching him. I just enjoy him so much. Um, but anyways, he's been going through his Penguin Classics, and there he has a lot of uh, ancient Greek and Roman authors. And um, I had not read this one, and I absolutely loved the cover. I saw it on there, so I had to get it. So that's what I did. I wasn't going to buy any books. Okay, the next book I saw was The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis. Um, this is, I love devil stories, and this is about the devil exchanging letters with a demon in training, and I just thought that sounded marvelous. I was like, I have to buy that. I absolutely love, love devil stories, and also I really liked this edition. I think it's a really cute dust jacket, and it has the pages I really like. These little uneven pages, you see that? I love that. You know, it kind of gives it that old book feel, you know? So yeah, so I had to have this. It's a gift edition. I've never even knew there was such a thing as a gift edition. Okay, and then I picked up Resin by Anne Ryle. And this book is about a father who fakes his daughter's death. And she goes along with it when she's young. And I do not know what's going to happen in this book. I actually had forgotten about this book until it came in the mail. And I'm, I'm really hoping it's not a child molester story. I mean, I... I will read those kinds of books, but I have to be in the right mood. And, and now is not the time. I'm, I'm, I'm not in the state of mind to be reading some child molester story. <laughs> so I probably won't pick this up for quite some time just in case it is. Um, but I love the cover and the story does sound like an interesting story. So sometime in the future, I'll give that one a try. And I'll let you know. And then the next one I picked up was Odessa Stories by Isaac Babel. Again, I really like, I like the, co the colors on this cover really well. Um, I really got sucked in by the covers this time. <laughs> there was a lot of nice covers that I liked. Um, and this one is a collection of short stories um, based in the city of Odessa. I'll just quickly read you the synopsis here. In the city of Odessa, the lawless streets hide darker stories of their own, from the magnetic cruelty of mob boss Benya Crick to the devastating account of a young Jewish boy caught up in a pogrom. Odessa Stories uncovers the tales of gangsters, prostitutes, beggars, and smugglers. No one can escape the pungent, sinewy force of Isaac Babel's pen. Ooh, sounds good. Okay, and then this book, I've seen this one around quite a lot. It's called Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. I've seen this around, but the, the cover that I've seen is black and it has like a red rose on it. And I have never seen this edition before. And since I do like the whole, you know, uh, premise of somebody dying and coming back or reliving the same day over and over or the same life over and over, that sort of thing, um, I thought, well, I'm going to go ahead and pick this up. This cover is really pretty and it's got a little fox on it. I have no idea what the fox is for. And again, it's got those pages. The uneven pages and it's got the little flappies little flappies I don't know what they're called but I really like them so this is a nice paperback I mean really really nice paperback so and I'm a hardback girl but that that's a really nice paperback and then I got small spaces by Catherine Arden and this was actually one of the books it um I, I had another video where I talked about this I had a very large book outlet haul where I got like 22 books and something had happened during its transit and the box was shredded, just absolutely shredded. Clearly everything had spilled out of it. The box was just shredded and being held together with tape. And so four of my books were missing and then I had two books in that box that were not mine. I don't know, one was a catalog with a mailing label on it, on it even. So I think they just were trying to do use their best guess and shove books back into the boxes they thought they went in. 
but Book Outlet went ahead and sent me the one of the four that they still had um, and then gave me credit for the rest of the books, which of course I bought more books with. <laughs> and then, um, and then this book, I don't, this is called Tomorrow and it's by Damien Dibbins, Damien Dibbin, excuse me. I don't really get into stories where the main character is an animal. I, I'm not into animal stories. I don't really care for that. And I can't even think of a book that I've read where the main character was an animal that I enjoyed. Uh, I'm sure that I probably have, but Benji is the only one that comes to mind. And that was when I was in grade school. So, you know, but this one sounded so good. I just, I had to get it. I'll just, I'll just read you some of the synopsis. A uh, winter's night, Venice, 1815, a 217 year old dog is searching for his lost master. So begins the journey of tomorrow, a dog who must travel through the courts and battlefields of Europe and through the centuries in search of the man who granted him immortality. His adventures take him to the London Frost Fair, the strange court of King Charles I, the wars of the Spanish, Spanish succession, Versalis, the golden age of Amsterdam and, the, and to 19th century Venice. His is a story of loyalty and determination as tomorrow befriends both animals and humans, falls in love only once, marvels at the human ability to make music, despairs at their capacity for war, and gains insight into both the strength and frailties of the human spirit. And I am a really, really, that's, this book sounds so good to me, and I just, I cannot wait to read this book, and I might, I want to read this in the next month or so. And then I got On Cats by Charles Bukowski. I really like Charles Bukowski. I know that a lot of people don't like him, but I do. I really enjoy his poetry. And of course, I have a black cat named Ninja, and there's a black cat on the cover, so I had to buy this book. <laughs> Wasn't going to say no to that. Okay, and then the next two books I actually got in a subscription box, my Box Wallace subscription box, um, which I... I came across randomly on the internet. I don't know what I was looking at, but it popped up. And I've never heard anybody on BookTube talk, talk about the subscription box. But what it is, is they send you a box every other month with two books in it. And then like one little extra thing, like the first box had a box of, um, or I mean, a little package of really cute bookmarks. The one I got this month had a little pocket notebook that had um, a quote from Robert Frost on the front uh, from one of his poems. And um, they're supposed to be sort of hidden gem books from all over the world that they feel are underrated. So um, one of the books in that box was An Empty Room, which is a collection of short stories by Muzin or Muzin. I'm not sure which. And it was translated by uh, Toming Jun, Jun Liu. Toming Jun Liu. And no, I don't know that I'm pronouncing that correctly. But anyways, I thought this sounded really good. I'll just read you a little bit here. In Empty Room is the first book by the celebrated Chinese writer and artist Mu Xin to appear in English. A cycle of 13 evocative stories written while Mu Xin was living in exile. The collection recalls the structural beauty of Hemingway's In Our Time and the imagistic power of Kawabata's Palm of the Hand stories, which I'm not familiar with that. From the ordinary to the unusual to the wise, Zhu Min's Wanderings, I, interweaves plots with philosophical grace and spiritual profundity. So yeah, this sounds like the kind of thing that I would really enjoy. So I'm going to pick this up one of these days, sometime soon. And then the other book that I got in that box was called Abigail by Magda Zabo, and it's been translated by Len Ricks. I love the pretty colors on this. It's so pretty. Uh, let's see, and I'll just read you. I can't remember the synopsis to a lot of these. That's why I'm reading them. Uh, Abigail, the story of a headstrong teenager growing up during World War II, is the most beloved of Magda Zabo's books in her native Hungary. Gina is the only child of a general, a widower who has long happy, who has been long, oh gosh, can't read, a widower who has long been happy to spoil his bright and willful daughter. Gina is devastated when the general tells her that she will be, he will be sending her to a boarding school in the country. She is even more aghast at the grim religious institution to which she will soon find herself consigned. <laughs> Sounds awful. She fights with her fellow students, rebels against her teachers, is completely ostracized, and finally runs away. Caught and brought back, Gina can only entrust her fate to the legendary Abigail, as the classical statue of a woman with an urn that stands in the school's grounds has come to be called. If you're in trouble, it said, leave a message with Abigail and help will be on the way. Sounds good. So I'm going to try to get to that reasonably soon, next few months. Okay, we got more to go. Now, these are my book depository books. Um, 
this is Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie. <laughs> no. <laughs> Abercrombie. Abercrombie. I have the, his name's a tongue twister. <laughs> God, great. Um, this is book two of the first, let's see, what is it called? The First Law Trilogy, I think. Yeah, the First Law Trilogy. And these, these are anniversary editions. I bought book one, this is book two, and then next month I'll buy book three. So yeah, I'm really excited to read this. I've heard so many good things about it. And it's supposed to be a grim dark fantasy, which I never even knew was a genre. That's not what I call those books. I just called them dark fantasy. <laughs> okay, and then the next one I got from Book Depository was The Last of the Wine by Mary Renault. I saw this on Steve Donahue's channel. He really talked up this book. He described it as being a passionate love affair between two men. And the setting is ancient Greece where um, uh, sort of older men and younger men got together. It was part of their society. And Steve Donahue talked about that in his video. Um, but anyways, I thought this book sounded marvelous. I absolutely had to have it. So I ordered it and here it is. And I do want to read this um, very, very soon. It's my goal to read this within the next month. Then... Now I'm on to my Amazon purchases. Um, Steve Donahue again, uh, he is of course my favorite booktuber and he is doing a Lonely Trollope read-along where um, he's gonna be reading one book by Anthony Trollope each month, um, I believe for the rest of the year. And so I absolutely am going to participate in that. I've never read any Anthony Trollope so I'm really excited about it. And the first book that um, he's gonna be reading in March is called Mr. Scarborough's Family. I plan to start it on March 1st. So yeah. Um, this is about a man who has like a gambling problem and a drinking problem and how it affects his life and his family. And if you are interested in buying this book, I had a terrible time finding a copy that was not abridged. I couldn't find a new copy that was unabridged. Um, so I went with a used one. Um, it was crazy. I couldn't believe how difficult that was to find. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is that with that. They shouldn't do that with the classics. Okay, and then the book I actually, I, I saw the sequel to this book on, on Rachel's channel over at The Shades of Orange, who, she is an awesome booktuber, absolutely love her videos as well. Um, this is, I, the, the book she was showing was called All Smoke Rises by um, Mark Matthews. And that book looked good to me. And so I found out um, when I went to look for it on Amazon that, it, that that one is actually a sequel, that this is the first blood, uh, the first blood. <laughs> the first book and it's called Milk Blood. So I went ahead and picked up the first one and I'm going to read it and if I like it then I'm going to go ahead and pick up that second one which is called All Smoke Rises. And then again because Steve Donahue was talking about Edgar Rice Burroughs on his channel and if you're not familiar Edgar Rice Burroughs wrote the John Carter series and he also wrote the Tarzan series. Um, and so anyways he was talking about Edgar Rice Burroughs so I started looking up Edgar Rice Burroughs of course and, um, and I was like, oh, I didn't realize he wrote this. So um, it, I believe this is a trilogy. It might be a series. I don't know. I never really spent a lot of time looking into Edgar Rice Burroughs. Um, however, you know, it's where people find an isolated piece of land that still contains dinosaurs. And I'm very, very interested in reading this. And I, I would like to get to this in the next month. It's a, it's a bind up. It's all three books in one. If there's only three books. I think it's only three books, but I, I could be wrong. I'm starting to run out of room on the cart. Okay. And then I got this book, Promise of Blood, Brian McClellan. The reason I picked this up is because my son and I were finally going to buddy read a book together. I've been after him to read with me for quite some time, and he finally decided to read with me. However, he chose this book that he already had, and I started reading it. And, you know, it looks like it's, I got about 35 pages or so in, and it looks like it's going to be a lot of uh, political intrigue and a lot of battles. And that's not really the kind of thing I like to read. Um, you know, it has to be done just right in order for me to really enjoy that kind of book. So even though it looks like it's interesting, it had a very interesting cast system and the magic seemed very interesting. I'm going to save this for another time. I'm, I'm not really in the mood to be picking up and trying something that's outside of my comfort zone, so to speak. So... But, you know, I did buy it, so it's in the hall. <laughs> I'm having trouble. Okay, so the next book I picked up was Carmilla by a French author whose name I'm about to butcher. J. Sheridan Le Fanu. Le Fanu? There, you know how to pronounce that, you tell me. 
So this is a vampire novel um, that was published before Bram Stoker's Dracula. And Bram Stoker apparently was so impressed with this novella that he based his story Dracula on this novella. Um, however, the vampire in this book is a female, so that might be part of the reason why it wasn't so popular. I don't really know, but I'm really anxious to read this because of that. I'm having problems. Don't mind me. And then, because Steve Donahue was going over all of his ancient Greek and Roman writers, um, I had to pick up this copy of uh, The Odyssey by Homer. It's translated by Emmy, uh, Emily Wilson. See, he was talking about... Um, all these Greek um, books and stuff. And then I had seen a while back on a frolic through fiction, she had this copy of the Odyssey. And so that was already in my mind and I had thought about picking up, but then when Steve Donahue started, you know, going over all these ancient Greeks, I, that really put me in, in the mood to want to read some, some ancient Greek. And I have read this before, but, um, but you know, you can't, it's a great, it's a great, it's a great story. I mean, you can't really go wrong with it. And it's another translation, which I haven't read because I haven't read this story since I was in junior high. So I think it was the last time. And also this book is really nice too. See, it's got the pages and the little flaps, you know? Yeah. So anyway, so I'm going to read this sometime. Sometime soon. I should trademark soon. <laughs> Uh, the Drowning People, another book I saw on uh, Steve Donahue, The Drowning People by Richard Mason. This was a best-selling uh, novel, and it was his debut novel, and he was 18 or 19 when he wrote it. That's really impressive. It sounded really good, so I had to pick it up. Uh, I'll just read you a little bit of the synopsis here. My wife of more than 45 years shot herself yesterday afternoon. At least that is what the police assume, and I'm playing the part of grieving widower, widower with enthusiasm and success. Of course, I know that she did nothing of the kind. My wife was far too sane, far too rooted in the present to think of harming herself. It was I who killed her. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, and then this is one of the books that was missing from the book haul I was talking about where the box was shredded. Um, it is a duology um, called The Death and Life of Zebulon Finch. This is volume one at the Edge of Empire by Daniel Krauss. And book two made it to me, but book one did not. It was one of the missing books. So uh, Book Depository was out of this book. So I just went ahead and got it off of Amazon. Um, and it is that same thing where somebody dies and then they come back and um, to live their life again. And that's what this book is about. And I thought it sounded, or this duology is about, and I thought it sounded really good. So it's on the list. And then once again, Steve Donahue. <laughs> was talking about this book on his channel called The Black Arrow by Robert Louis Stevenson. He's the, also the author of uh, Treasure Island. And I did read Treasure Island. I read it in grade school and I read it again when I was in my early 20s. And um, I have, uh, I, I'm wanting to do a week where I read like three um, classic adventure novels. And so I thought, ooh, this would be the perfect time. And Treasure Island is one of them that I'm gonna read. And so, and I haven't even read this one at all. So I thought, ooh, I'll pick that one up and I'll read it during that week, so. Okay, and then the last book that I'm gonna mention, I got off of Amazon. It's uh, Jaws by Peter Benchley, and I have already posted a review of this book. It is terrible, it is awful, and I highly recommend that you do not read this, and I'll tell you why. It is, see all these tags right here? This book is full of bigotry and racism and sexism, and there's a dash of anti-Semitism. I was really, um, I'm angry while I was reading this book. <laughs> so I don't recommend that anybody read it unless you just want to see what, you know, the fuss is about. Um, or if you're just, you know, super fan of the movie Jaws, which I was, which is why I read this. Um, I guess I'm not sorry I read it, but I am kind of sorry I read it. I mean, I just have to pretend like this book doesn't exist and that the movie was its own thing only. So anyways, don't read this unless you are really, um, interested in seeing what I'm talking about, or if um, you just can't help yourself, you're a super Jaws fan and you just have to know. <laughs> the story is not as good, by the way, it's, it's boring. And the shark is only in it for, he makes two brief appearances here, and then he's only in the last 48 pages and that's all the shark you get. So I'm just saying, enter at your own risk. Okay, so that is all of the books that I got in February, and I don't plan to buy any more books for a little while. 
Um, but you never know. Uh, I am me after all. So yeah, again, still haven't thought of an outro. And I did rebel in the last video because my best friend told me that it really annoyed him when I just poked the button and ended the video. So I rebelled in the last one and poked the button anyway. So I won't do that in this one. So I'll just say goodbye. I'll do a little princess die wave. Bye. Oh.